However, there's a problem. We can kind of, oh, and now we're on our side, and it it still works. But if this had, uh, if we scope in, make a painting pointing up. Uh, all our animations and and sprites or whatever we want it to look like, this will be invisible. So everything will be pointing in one direction like that. But then if we fall off the side. That's not how platformers work. Um, so let's uh, fix that. Uh, we'll, we'll have a. We'll go onto the grid, and add a chip. This chip will be kind of a general purpose. Everything in the scene, apart from the uh, puppets and whatever, uh, apart from the controlled objects. So we'll put that about there, and then we'll make. A tag. We'll give it a name, and we'll call this plane because we're going to use it for a few things. And uh, we can turn off the grid now. And then we will use a teleporter. So this tag. If I just grab this, you can see. It has like an orientation. It's got X going that way, Y going up that way, and Z going that way. Uh, you can like rotate it and do whatever you like with it, and move it around the scene. Uh, but we don't want to mess with it really. We will just leave it as where the chip is, and we'll use that directly with a teleporter. Our teleporter has a tag name it looks for, uh, and we can use up and down to cycle through the tag names in the scene. So now we've got plane. We don't want this object to uh, get stuck to this position over here. We just want to use its orientation. So we'll turn the target position off and tar target orientation on. So now it's just as before. But then if we go on here, it doesn't like fall. It doesn't start rotating because it's always trying to to match that uh, rotation of the tag. Uh, it does have uh, this method does have like it slowly slides off the side, but it seems like that's just part of how the physics works if you uh, have this kind of stuff. Um, and it won't bother most players anyway. It probably won't be too noticeable. Let's add a little obstacle thing. Let's make it a different color, and then put it here. And we'll use a action recorder to just record it bashing forwards now and then. Um, yeah, uh, cool. So now if I jump up here and we get in the way, then we're being shoved forwards, and now we can't get back on that um, on those steps. Uh, because we can't go back into the scene and stuff like that. So what we really want to do is for, to make sure this cube stays on this plane and doesn't waver too much. Um, because uh, it might not be as obvious as this. It might be... Let's move this over there. It might just be some like background scenery or something like that that happens to be... Like it could trip up on it. And get shoved about by it. So it's getting shoved forward like that. So for that we will use that same tag uh, but we'll use a follower uh, and we use the same tag name. We use up and down on this one and we'll have full strength and damping and have a big load of speed. Oh we're doing that. Big load of speed. And uh, what that will do is, oh, if I just reset that, it drags uh, something towards the target position, which is dictated by the position of the tag. But we only want it to be, um, like if we put it like this, it will be pulled back to this, this kind of level, which is what we want. But we don't want it to affect jumping and moving left and right. So let's go into the, the uh, strength and damping tab. And we don't want it to affect X, which is left and right, 
or Y, which is up and down. We just want it to affect Z, which is like forwards and backwards, I guess. And same for these. Um, cool, so now if we play time, it will get dragged back to that position. And we jump around. And even if we get shoved forwards, it will we'll get dragged back to the right uh, the right point in the scene. Um, uh, and then we can increase this speed so that it's just pretty much instantaneous. Uh, yeah, and uh, to set this initial position, it can be helpful if you just shove it in the air or whatever, and then let it play, and then pause time, turn on the grid, uh, and then just tap this object with R2, and then turn off the grid, rewind, and it will stay in that position even when rewound, and then when you play time, it will just start in that um, resting position. Now you may have noticed the gravity is a little bit. It's a little bit too floaty. So uh, what we'll do is introduce our own gravity. Um, we'll turn off the gravity of the sculpture itself and we will uh, fake some gravity by using a mover. So we'll leave damping off and yeah we'll just play with that in a minute. But we'll uh, make the arrow point down Cool. and uh, that will give us some gravity so if I press X now it's still got gravity if we turn this off it would like float into the sky cool so now we have uh, more control over over the gravity uh, we can adjust it however we want so we can just increase it or whatever what we want to look out for is like the speed of the fall um, because we can adjust the jump speed separately over here so we can go higher jump. Something uh, that people do is uh, if you are, we should have another chip for this because there's more detection stuff. Um, so let's have another green chip. This one will detect if we are moving down or not. So let's put a movement sensor and we have y which is the velocity in the y-axis so uh, let's say with a calculator if the y velocity is less than zero then we want to do some stuff so i will uh, i'll do the uh, switch and keyframe trick and that'll be turned on when um, we're actually moving downwards. So we'll use this. Let's just see if that works first. Uh, in our test mode. Okay. So while we're falling, that is on. If we look at this one over here, that one's also turned on while it's falling. So that's what we want. So um, if we're falling, then we want to use a keyframe to turn up the gravity uh, and we'll power that. We'll just make this quite a large difference actually. Cool. So it's kind of like a stomp now, but you can adjust, adjust that how you want. But also what we can do is say if we've let go of X, then we want to increase that gra gravity as well. So that if I like let go of X really quick, then we just do a tiny hop. And if I keep holding it, we'll do the normal big jump. Um, cool. Uh, let's use the same trick again. And you can, so uh, the method of using these, you can use just wires plugging into things all over the place. Uh, but this is kind of like a fairly cheap um, wireless uh, way of doing things. And uh, it's still fairly easy to track around. So then you just plug that in there and copy that over here. So that still affects that and that. That's cool. And I always leave a, a the original there to remind me that it's a switch keyframe. Uh, yeah. So now uh, while X is not held, and we are in the air because we don't really want to be messing with the gravity while we're on the ground, 
So while we're in the air as well, uh, use an AND gate. So X is not held and we're in the air. Uh, or we're just falling. Let's put this over there. Then we turn on this keyframe and it messes with gravity. So, uh, yeah, so at the start it's off. Let's just pin that to the screen, make it smaller, and go into test mode. So while we're falling, if I just tap X, it's a little bit, you can, you can see the gravity kicking in earlier. So if you're like really good at um, this level or something, you can like do tiny hops just to just about meet the top instead of like wasting time in the air going like that. I'd like to thank Rev Player, Shadow of Callus, Colvitzer, and all of my other supporters for making this tutorial possible. Thanks for watching. If you'd like me to continue making these tutorials and helping creators across the internet. You can find out how to support me in the link in the description. Thanks for your consideration, and I'll see you in the next one.